January was a frustrating month for Link Light Rail riders. From January 13th to February 4th, the one-line trains were single-tracking from Westlake to International District in Chinatown. There were two projects happening simultaneously, 500 feet of track between University Street and Westlake, along with 58 bond boxes were being replaced. For some context, from 2009 to 2019, both buses and light rail trains ran through this tunnel. Since they had to share the space, the rails were embedded in the tunnel roadway rather than being on top. So when maintenance must be performed on these rails, an intensive surgery to demolish and rebuild the rails is required. During this disruption, frequency and travel times traveling through the downtown tunnel was said to be reduced to every 26 minutes. But, in actuality, wait times were upwards of 35 minutes. Frequency is one of the core pillars of a good transportation system. So when maintenance results in half-hour headways, the system is basically unusable. Plenty of people still rely on Link Light Rail, so avoiding it was simply not an option. Crowds would grow until the trains and station platforms were crammed with numerous people. Sound Transit suggested these problems would sort themselves out, but the only way that is possible is if people temporarily gave up on using Link Light Rail during these maintenance periods. To make matters worse, there were reportedly several collisions along the at-grade section of the one line that runs through a near valley. On January 31st, there was not one, but two crashes between a car and one of the light rail trains at the exact same intersection. This only further delayed trains at a critical time when the rider experience was already hampered by ongoing construction. While construction inside the downtown transit tunnel is a major inconvenience, at least it is a temporary one that is announced ahead of time. In fact, I would argue the bus tunnel is actually a good thing. The bus tunnel essentially paved a path for grade-separated transit through the downtown. It was a critical piece of infrastructure that helped get Link Light Rail started. Since the trains were routed through a tunnel, it freed up space above, and it provided a dedicated right-of-way, thus improving safety and reliability. It certainly has its drawbacks. There are no stations designed for cross-platform transfers. With the two-line fully opening next year, it would be beneficial if at least one station allowed for a seamless transfer for people traveling between Redmond and Bellevue and places to the south of the Chinatown International District. It would also be helpful if there were crossovers that allowed trains to switch tracks within the tunnel so maintenance does not result in the entire tunnel being shut down. Despite these drawbacks, the original downtown transit tunnel is a net positive for transit. Even Portland is considering boring a tunnel for its max light rail system, and according to their 2019 study, it would reduce travel times, increase on-time performance, and allow the trains to speed up when traveling through the downtown. This should help give an idea of the benefits of running light rail through a tunnel instead of running it at grade through the downtown. Construction is always inconvenient and disruptive, but it can be mitigated. It may be worthwhile to have a permanent shuttle running between Soto and Capitol Hill, so there is always another route people can fall back on in the case of construction or emergency repairs. This is also why Sound Transit needs to be forward-thinking with the next downtown tunnel. Transit advocates are pushing for a station under 4th Avenue to connect with the Chinatown International District. If this version of the tunnel is built, maintenance within the tunnel would lead to people transferring to the other line at either Westlake or Chinatown International District, thus circumnavigating the effective area. It's always important to have redundancies in a transit system so people can easily fall back on another system. The at-grade section of the one line, on the other hand, is much more problematic than the downtown transit tunnel. When heading through Rainier Valley, the one line travels within the median of Martin Luther King Jr. Way from the intersection of South Walden Street all the way to the intersection of South Norfolk Street. For the most part, Link Light Rail through Rainier Valley is fine. The route itself is good. Typically, light rail hugs the freeway, which drastically reduces the walk shed, and it results in stations being in less convenient locations. I am glad that the one line travels along a strode between the suburbs, because it leads to the stations being located in places where there's a lot of potential for transit-oriented developments. 
The real problem here is the unprotected grade crossings where cars, trucks, and pedestrians may intersect the path of link light rail vehicles. Since 2009, there has been an average of one collision every 40 days. These disruptions can occur randomly because it is a side effect of the tracks running alongside the roadway, with wide intersections that have no physical barrier preventing drivers from entering the tracks. A vast majority of these collisions were the result of a vehicle making illegal left turns either from through lanes or while on a red arrow. There's also a significant number of collisions where pedestrians have stepped into the train crossing, and eight people have actually died along these tracks over the past decade. Since there are a lot of points of contention along the segment of the one line, it should not be a surprise that so many collisions have occurred along this section of the route. As published in a 2019 Hazard Analysis and Risk Assessment, based on the severity and probability, the risk collision between pedestrians and light rail vehicles on the MLK corridor presents an undesirable hazard, which is putting it lightly. Fortunately, there are various mitigation strategies, as noted in a technical report Sound Transit issued back in 2022. One solution to prevent illegal left turns are gate arms that would lower as trains are coming. It's a fairly common practice, so it is peculiar that the one line does not already have this safety feature. Martin Luther King Way could also be modified with internally illuminated raised pavements. These are lights in the roadway that would illuminate when a train is coming, adding additional visual feedback. LA Metro has tested this along 14 intersections, and they found that it does significantly reduce left turn violations, especially on weekdays. To improve pedestrian safety, this report recommends adding automatic pedestrian swing gates, which open and close depending on if there is an oncoming train or not. This report also offers suggestions on how to improve each grade crossing, so if Sound Transit does pursue a revision to this portion of the one line, it does shed some light on what we may see in the future. Another proposed solution is to have the trains travel at a lower speed through Rainier Valley, so they can stop sooner and hopefully avoid more collisions. In a 2019 report, Sound Transit suggested reducing the operating speed at grade crossings to 25 miles per hour and reducing the operating speed at station platforms to 20 miles per hour. This would slow down the train by around two and a half minutes along the Rainier Valley Corridor. While this may help, it would also be at the expense of the rider's experience. Link Light Rail isn't a surface running tram. It is acting like a regional light rail system, so it needs to be able to maintain the speed of one. It already takes a long time to travel between the airport and the downtown, so the trip would be less convenient if the train had to travel even slower through a near valley. Two and a half minutes doesn't sound like much, but it does add up. As I have said earlier in this video, frequency is one of the core pillars of a good transportation system. People should be able to walk up to the station and get on the train, without really thinking about how long they had to wait. The trains also need to be able to beat the car traffic in order to make it a more desirable method of getting around. So this wouldn't exactly be the best solution, especially since other viable solutions haven't been attempted yet. So far, attempts to make the safer transit corridor have been insubstantial. In October 2022, the volume of the bell sound made by the trains increased from 80 decibels to 90. Louder trains may be more audible to pedestrians, but drivers are in soundproofed metal cages, so the extra noise may not reduce collisions between vehicles and trains. Several years ago, the speed limit for cars has been reduced to 25 miles per hour, but since you can't just lower speed limits, people still travel at the design speed of the road, which is 35 miles per hour. This attempt does kind of have the right idea, though. Revising Martin Luther King Jr. Way to reduce the number of lanes and slow down the car traffic so it is less of a strode and more like a street with a tramway in the middle would be beneficial to making this a safer transit corridor. There are plenty of mitigation strategies in order to make this a more reliable section of the one line. It is rather annoying having this discussion because these mitigation strategies wouldn't even be necessary if the system was grade separated. If this portion of the one line ran through a tunnel or was elevated when it was originally built, 
the entire system would be safer, faster, and more reliable. As of now, the Rainier Valley segment is a massive bottleneck for the entire system. I don't want to paint at grade to be inherently worse than grade-separated transit. It is not always necessary to route trains through an elevated guideway or a tunnel. If the speed or the frequency is low enough for running them at grade to not be much of a concern, then it may not need to be completely grade-separated. However, Rainier Valley doesn't seem to be one of the times when it is appropriate to run a train at grade. Now, Sound Transit must spend additional money to mitigate damages, when the most effective way to prevent both vehicle and pedestrian collisions would have been to either run the tracks through a tunnel or an elevated guideway. Unfortunately, making this change would require an intrusive surgery along Martin Luther King Jr. Way. Is it really worth disrupting the one line for an extended period of time and forcing the neighborhood to endure the construction to permanently fix these issues when that money could also be spent expanding the network elsewhere? That's not an easy decision to make. Hopefully, this portion of the one line is eventually moved to a cut-and-cover tunnel or a raised guideway, but I am doubtful such a change will happen for a very long time. Sometimes there is only one shot to get things right, and paying a greater upfront cost for a superior transit service is worthwhile, especially since the consequences of not grade-separating will impact riders for generations to come.